18s for Muwalani, let's get straight into it. With her being so strong in vape, let's look at vape teams first. Muwalani, Kazuha, Shangling and Zhongli is going to be a lot of people's Muwalani team. The damage will be massive, but you do have to build a lot of energy recharge on Shangling. Giving both her and Zhongli Fafonius Lance if you have to will be helpful. If not, you can swap her attack sands off for an energy recharge sands. You can give Zhongli the new support set from the same domain you're farming Muolani's set from too. It's going to increase the damage of any element Zhongli reacts with which, in this team, is likely going to be pyro for Shangling. She'll appreciate that given the fact she's losing damage compared to a normal national team, with her not being the one triggering vapes. I want to give a quick disclaimer regarding this team. The gameplay for this team in particular was slightly rushed. The other teams are fine but I want to point out a mistake that I made so that you avoid it and also so that you can get the most damage out of your Muolani. You want to start with Muolani's normal attack to apply Hydro, then swirl with Kazuha's skill for Viridescent Venera, then continue with the rest of your rotation. Shangling burst into Kazuha's burst, then into Muolani for her gameplay. I didn't do the Muolani normal and Kazuha's skill at the start, so I just want to emphasize that you do want to swirl with a normal attack first. This way you're reducing the opponent's resistance to both Pyro and Hydro. Swapping Kazuha out for Farina gives you an extra damage dealer, and then Zhongli out for Baiju is going to give you the heals to compensate for the self-damage from Farina. There might be occasions where Farina steals the vape, hopefully not too often with Baiju applying a little bit of Dendro for burning. Farina's damage buff will balance it out a bit though. Running this team allows you to run the Marisho set, which is a positive if you have a good 4-piece. Another bonus of this team is that it has the Hydro Resonance, giving the entire team extra HP. Three of the four characters here scale off HP, so we take those. I like this team because it's a Pokemon party. We've got Muolani's Shark, Farina's Sea Creatures, Shangling's Bear, and Baiju's Snake. If you don't have Baiju, you could use Yao Yao, and she sticks with the Pokemon theme having her own rabbit. Yao Yao might actually be a good option to fill out some of her rotation because Muolani has downtime anyway. She has synergy with Farina too. She heals a lot of times in small increments, so Farina gets a lot of fanfare stacks. You could even give Yao Yao 4 piece instructor because even though we know vape damage is increased by elements, mental mastery. How many of you are intentionally building any on Muolani? Be honest, I didn't either so you're not alone. Also, I'd definitely give Yao Yao Favonius Lance to generate some particles for Shang Ling. Hopefully Mavuika works in this role because Shang Ling's gonna get so annoying after a while. If you don't have Farina, then Candice is a good alternative for a normal attack bonus, the Hydro Resonance and she also scales off HP. Because we don't need a healer with Farina not being here, we've got Zhongli back in there because he's less energy reliant than Baiju. To anyone who's seen my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of Candice. I don't feel like she had a lot of use when she first released, but it seems every region introduces new ways to bring her into the mix, which I appreciate, and Muolani adds another. I think it's good to build Candice too, because she's an extra unit for Imaginary Inferta, which is nice for those struggling to make up the numbers. You don't even need to touch her talent levels. It's better if you do, of course, but keeping her at triple one and leveling her up for the extra HP will be enough. Her talent levels don't affect a normal attack buff, only her HP does. Okay, this is the last Shangling team, I promise. Muolani, Emily, Shangling and Zhongli is similar to the first team, except instead of Kazuha's buffs and resistance shred, we're getting an extra damage dealer. This can be useful towards the end of Abyss Chambers, because if you want to save your burst for the next chamber, having damaged Tai T characters' skills doesn't consume energy, but still allows you to deal damage. For example, if you had a small chunk of an enemy's HP left with Kazuha instead of Emily, you'd be using Shangling's skill and then Muolani's skill. Realistically, it's not going to be enough pyro for Muolani to vape all of his, but with Emily it will be because she'll be creating a burning aura, and Emily's a source of extra damage. Now what if you're bored of Shangling, which is completely understandable? You can swap her out to get Dia in there. It'll mean less damage, but it's less burst reliant than the Shangling variant, and with Dia providing sustainability, we can swap out Zhongli for Nahida. The elemental mastery from Nahida's burst and the Dendro resonance means you can build less on Muolani and focus more on HP and crit stats. You can even use Dia's burst during in Muolani's downtime, which is nice for those of us that like Dia, but have been underwhelmed with her from a meta perspective. I'm sure you know by now, but just in case you don't, we can choose a free copy of Dia as our anniversary gift. Of all the seven standard units available, I find Dia to be the most versatile, so she's the one I recommend if you don't have any of them. I did a guide on her recently, which a lot of people found useful, so check that out if you haven't already. 
Putting Vape aside completely, let's look at Monohydro. Mualani and Farina is a good core that we talked about earlier. Kazuo will benefit the pair of them, and then there are a few sustain options. One worth considering, which a lot of you might be pleased to hear, is Siegeween. As you know, she's not considered to be the most meta option, but a lot of you love her design. So having another team for her is nice, and she also scales off HP, so she benefits from Hydro Resonance too. There might even be incentive to use Siegeween's burst during Mualani's downtime. I don't have Siegeween, but you could go with Baiju and give him a new support set to boost the team's hydro damage. Charlotte can hold it too and you can get some freeze off. You could even try having fun with Jean for the Animo Resonance which increases movement speed and reduces skill cooldown slightly. Keeping Vapor side again, Mualani has options for double Hydro and double Geo teams. Chiori would be solid for constant off-field damage, Navia deals a lot of front-loaded damage with short cooldowns too, which makes her a nice option for Mualani's downtime. For the second Hydro character, I think it's worth taking Mona off the bench. She can hold the new support set so everyone gets extra elemental damage, and you can give a prototype Amber if you need heals. Realistically, there aren't too many Hydro units that synergize with Mualani. Her normal attacks are too slow to trigger your land and sing Cho's burst and others apply too much hydro. One of Mona's flaws in not applying enough hydro for most teams actually becomes a strength with Mualani. As mentioned earlier, Candice is a nice option too if you don't have Mona. Personally, I'm hoping that the Leopard Girl Sheila Nen will be useful in this team. If she can provide off-field damage buffs or shreds, she'll have value here. If you don't have Chiori, Kachina will be a good alternative purely because she can hold the new support set and give the full 40% elemental damage buff. Mona on the other hand can only give 12%. Finally, little bit of a meme team but you could go for quick swap units like Mualani, Tignari, Navia and Aflex. Zhongli is the easiest choice for Geo Resonance and Resistance Shred. Dia can apply Pyro so Mualani can still get some vapes off. I don't recommend these teams for Floor 12 or the Abyss, but I'm sure you could have a lot of fun with them in Domains and the Overworld. It'll be refreshing to have a random bullshit go team where any unit can have field time depending on whose bursts or skills are available. On this account, unfortunately I didn't have access to Navia, so this quick swap team doesn't have any footage but the idea is there if you want to try it. Also drop a comment if you have any ideas for units who have a little bit of field time to try in this team. Maybe an on-field DPS Kachina could be fun. For a score out of 10, I'd currently give Mualani a 7.5. She deals big single target damage, which is cool because we all love seeing big numbers, and she has a unique playstyle with her applying Hydro slowly for big hits. She has the free to play craftable weapon too, which is a positive for those that don't have a weapon for her. My favourite thing about her is that she brings lesser used units like Dia, Candice and Mona into play. There's just two things keeping her from a higher score. The first is that the pyro slot in her teams is awkward. Survivability with Dia can be a pain with a skill downtime even though you can work around it with Sacrificial Greatsword. There are other pyro units but let's be honest, we need an off-field pyro support tailored towards her playstyle. I think we'll get that in Natlan which brings me to my second point. There aren't currently enough Natlan units to trigger a passive. Once we get that, I can see a jump into an 8.5. I'm dropping a Kachina video today too and we all get it for free so if you're interested in that one, subscribe to the channel and take it easy.